Your vote could make all the difference. Mrs. Liversidge, with your support, we could become the fifth force in local government. Well, I think you've won me round. Really? Mm. Good. We can count on your vote next Thursday, then. Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 that might be a bit tricky. We're going to Harrogate Thursday. What about Friday? Thursday. No, it's not very convenient. I could do you Monday. I could squeeze you in between the dentist and the hairdressers. No, no, we all have to vote on the same day. It's the law. Thursday. No. Um, how about Wednesday week? No, it has to be Thursday. Fortnight Saturday. No, only Thursday. Oh, we'll have to leave it then. I'm sorry. Have a nice election. <laughs> That'll teach him. Knocking on my door all the time. I'm a bit early, but I got caught in a juggernaut slipstream. Right. Thanks for inviting me to the scattering bar. Oh, you're welcome, Dor. I didn't know your mother all that well, but I always admired her. The way she caught with that leg. I know. She deserved a medal the size of a toilet seat. <laughs> it's a nice idea to be scattering her on the boys. Well, we've been meaning to do it for months. <laughs> Go for it. Hey, Here, Linda, put that with all the others. New Pudsey Alliance. Yes, their main policies are to up the age of consent to 35 and ban all traffic on alternate Tuesdays. <laughs> well, we don't open the door to strangers anymore. Not now I've got a stalker. Martin reckons it's a fan of his TV show. No. Oh, really? Does he have hairy palms and bay at the moon? <laughs> no, he just sort of stares at you, doesn't he? So we've uh, had all new locks fitted. Chub? <laughs> I mean, you can't be too careful, you know. Better to upgrade your security system than wake up in the middle of the night with a strange man at the end of your bed. Oh, I don't know, though. <laughs> the hamper's packed. I've not skimped. I've got sushi, I've got Chinese parcels, and I've got crab sticks. Can you get ointment for that? <laughs> See, I think we should scatter Mother with a bit of style. She's not in the shed. I never said she was. Have you lost our Mother? Well, where is she? Try under the sink. Oh, she's done a runner. <laughs> Your mother was always an independent spirit. You did get her back from the crematorium. Yes, I did. Found her. She was behind the Mr. Muscle. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you lot. Neil, get those shoes on. Ted, you go and get that car. Yeah. Jean, you're in charge of the hamper. Now, come on, get yourself organised, Dory. Now, Martin, are you coming or not? Actually, I can't. I'm filming today with one of the nation's top TV names. Oh, who? Hmm. It's all hush hush, Jean. Oh. Is it Carol Vorderman? I can't be drawn. Oh, I'd love to meet her. Mm. Yes, there's not many can get away with wearing lemon. Mm. I'll see you later. <laughs> Happy scattering, everybody. Right. Looks like fagash. Well, she did smoke 40 a day. Put that <laughs> lid back. Get your shoes on. Mum, I've told you, I'm not coming. Back to back wacky races on the Cartoon Channel, and me and Darren Tunnicliffe like having a bet on who wins. Your dad has borrowed that car specially. You are coming. It's a family tradition. Your ancestors are sprinkled all over this county. Your granddad's spread on the Pudsey Bowling Green. Your great aunt Edith's on Hadley Fields. Exactly, where they later built the industrial estate. Little did she know she'd be sharing a final resting place with a branch of Ikea and the Quick Fit Fitters. <laughs> I say, when you're dead, you're dead. Chuck her in the garden. It's not what she wanted. <laughs> all right. We have to be back before Scooby-Doo. <laughs> intentions of dying, I quite fancy suspended animation. You should watch the wacky races with Neil then. No, I mean cryogenics. I want my entire body frozen to benefit future generations. Mm. I didn't know they could freeze silicon. <laughs> my client's been hooked on Hinduism on the internet. <gasps> www.hindu.com when he passes on, he wants to be floated down the Ganges on a raft. How lovely. The trouble is, our funeral plan won't run to India, so he's had to settle for a lilo on the Manchester ship canal. <laughs> Can we stop all this talk about death in front of the baby? Now, come on, you 
lot. Where's Mum now? Watching telly. <laughs> Neil, you know your gran never liked Richard and Judy. Now, come on. You see, the viewers are looking for a bit of authority. That little bit of magic. I'm like part Jeremy Paxman, part Trevor MacDonald. Eh, uh, a little bit of John Humphreys in me. A little bit of Des Lynham. <laughs> Michael Burke. Mm. Sir David Frost. <laughs> Maggie Philbin. Will you keep up at the back? Why couldn't we chuck her out of the car park? Have you seen the stick? <laughs> Every dog in Yorkshire's done its business there. Ashes to ashes, dust to dog dirt, no thank you. <laughs> oh, look, there's a camel. Where? That cloud up there. <laughs> you see, it's on. Oh, yes. Oh, I do wish Clive had come. He loves the open air. He was invited, Dory. I know, but he's not very sociable at the moment, not since I beat him at Connect Four. <laughs> you right, Jean? I think I've got a stone in my boot. Linda? I've got a kiddie tap dancing on my bladder. <laughs> hey, this'll do. No, oh, well, let's tip her out and have a sandwich. I do think somebody should say something. Well, I'm not. Well, don't look at me. Ted, say something. What? Something appropriate. Oh. Well, er... Um... <laughs> it's time to say goodbye for the last time to Gladys, the mother, the grandmother, <laughs> and an acquaintance. <laughs> she spent many happy hours up here in her youth, and then as a mother with her young family. And in later years, you can see her up here, her bandage flapping in the wind, <laughs> shouting at strangers and worrying sheep. <laughs> So let's, um, let's all say a prayer. <clears throat> our Father, our, our Father, Father, which art, art in heaven. Mum! Mum! What? The waters are broken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you lads, go and get yourself some lunch. I've got some calls to make. Pond? Martin Pond? Yep. Well, the Martin Pond that did that fantastic feature last week on the school dinner ladies who've taken up Tai Chi. Yeah, that's me. Who's this? It's Jeremy Paxman. Jeremy... Paxman. Yeah, I just wanted to say what a breath of fresh air you are in regional TV. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, can I just say, Jeremy, um, what an admirer of you I am. Your, your interview technique, your style of delivery, your... Uh, Hair. Well, you could if it was Jeremy Paxman. It's me, your great Jesse. What? Neil. Neil. Yes. Will you not bugger about on my telephone? This is for urgent messages only. Well, this is urgent. Your wife's about to drop your sprog. Uh -huh. Very funny. Will you get off the line? No, it's true. Her waters have just burst. Where? In a field, about five miles off the A67. Oh my God. Calm down. We're taking her home. Tell her I'll catch the next train. Uh, I'd better go. Neil, will you tell Linda I love her? <coughs> Neil? Neil! Right, station. Turn the car. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, can you come down a minute? Uh, I need you to take me to the station. Hello? Signal. I'll go and get the space cruiser. Don't be daft. You'll never get it over that style. Well, maybe I can do the AA. I don't know. I'll, I'll call Mountain Rescue. They'll send an air ambulance. Dead. Send up a flare. Somebody send up a flare. Ed! 
Now, everybody, just calm down. Shut up. Let's think clearly. Oh, I wish I'd told Neil to ring Clive. Why? I didn't know exactly what to do. He wants whelps and Afghans. Now, Linda, <laughs> would you like a Chinese parcel? No, thank you. This is your first baby. You know, it could be a long haul. Look, look, look. It's quite simple. We're sticking to the plan. We're going to walk her down, phone her head to alert the midwife, and she'll have the baby at her house. Don't you worry, love. We'll soon get you home. I think you've dislodged that filling bar. <laughs> oh, Ted, will you put your foot down? Bar, these roads are bumpy. It'll bring on the baby. Now, would anybody like a sandwich? Because I've got a compress, I've got chicken tikka. Barbara? Jean, food is the last thing on my mind. Oh, I'll have yours then. Oh, well. <laughs> my Clive likes beetroot and marmite. Oh. He's worked out it has everything you need for a balanced diet, mm. so long as it's on wholemeal bread. <laughs> it's got vitamin K and potassium. That's just your beetroot. Now, your marmite, well, you've got your theamine, your reboflavin, your vitamin B6, B12. Doreen? Yes? Shut up. <laughs> I'll get on your side. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello? Martin hasn't given me the new set. Oh, well, your new security's working. You can't get in your own house. Oh, <laughs> that lump of lard does ten minutes of twaddle on the box every night and he thinks he's a superstar. Stalker? Who'd stalk him? A Japanese whaling boat with a full set of art films. <laughs> Don't stop, Mum. Start! I haven't even got into gear yet. I could ram-raid the front door with the space cruiser. Dad! I'm sure the insurance could cover it. Clive and I once got locked out of our caravan in Port Merion. And? But what, what did you do? We drove home. <laughs> for the last scotch egg. You should do what I said you should do and have your baby in a hospital like any normal person. I don't want it in a hospital. Oh, you youngsters think it's trendy to have a baby at home. Well, it's not. It's dangerous. It isn't. It is. Maureen Mellor's daughter had her baby at home and she short-circuited the electric blanket. <laughs> oh, Aisha, thank God. How are you, Linda? Contracting every eight minutes. Well, let's get in. We can't. Martin's had these new locks put in. Well, it'll have to be the hospital then. Or somewhere else. I'm sorry, who are you? I'm the midwife. Oh. <laughs> Mum, it'll have to be your place. <laughs> you don't mind? No, no, no. I've got all this in front of me. <laughs> expecting? Any minute. Tea? Coffee? Oh, tea, please. Milk? <laughs> Just a slice of melon. Uh, lemon. No need to panic. We're all here. Everything's under control. Aisha, what do you want us to do? Uh, well, Mum and Linda upstairs, please. And Dad, I need bath towels, a bucket, oh, and put the kettle on. Sterilisation. I've seen this on Dr Quinn Medicine Woman. No, it's just a cup of tea and pies. <laughs> oi, oi, you're not doing it in my room. That's for conceptions, not birth. <laughs> I think you girls in the NHS do a wonderful job considering. You work wonders. I mean, take a dodgy hip. Years ago, you were confined to a bath chair, but now they just whip it out, pop another one in, Bob's your uncle. Half an hour later, the Queen Mum's at Royal Ascot. 
I mean, you don't get that treatment abroad. My friend Doreen fell off a Lambretta in Lanzarote and you should see the stitching on her thigh. She still reckons they wrote something rude in Spanish. <laughs> And we medical professionals, we do all this in the face of criminal underfunding. I mean, if you want a hospital bed these days, you've got to go to Bradford. When you think of all the miles that Sir Jimmy Savile's run, and they can't even afford to plug in that scanner. Is it Barbara? Yes. Shut up. You're such an impatient. Leeds, please. Where's that? <laughs> Leeds. I'm sorry, mate. I'm new. I've only just moved here from Liverpool. Down by the race course, straight down the A64. Right. I know you. You're that Martin Pond, aren't you? Yeah. Seen that programme of yours loads of times. Uh, what's it called now? Um, pond Life. Oh, that's it, Pond Life. On every day, isn't it? Yeah. Wife kills herself laughing when you're on. <laughs> well, <laughs> we aim to please. I can't stick him myself. <laughs> oh, thanks, lad. Have you seen The Exorcist? Sure. <laughs> I think I'll mow the lawn. You did it yesterday. I know. <laughs> so, how is the new lawnmower? Very good. Seems to cut grass well. Yes, it does. How's that then? Because that's what it does. <laughs> Cuts grass. I need a drink. Good idea. What do you want? I'll have a Snapple. Ow! And put a vodka in it. <laughs> How's it going? Very well. She's had all my sushi, and I've just got my scotch egg left. I'm on another coffee round. Is Linda all right? She's all right. It's that so-called midwife needs sorting out. Our Linda's in agony, and she sat there with a face full of raw fish. I thought you liked her. Oh, you know me, Ted. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but that's the NHS these days. You watch one old episode of All Creatures Great and Small with Christopher Timothy's arm up a sheep's backside, and suddenly you're a qualified midwife. <laughs> Midwife told her to shut up. <laughs> Where are we going? Down here. Well, this isn't it. But you said take the next left. I meant the next road left. <laughs> Where are we going now, then? Back. Oh, back. <laughs> Hello, Clive. Yes. Still at Barbara's. Well, she's fully dilated. Ah! No, that was Linda. <laughs> now, I said I'd stay till the bitter, so if you want any tea, I suggest you have a root in the freezer. Clive, it's more complicated than whelping an Afghan. <laughs> no, well, I don't want a row either. Is this still about Connect Four? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, nothing against you or Tuna. Uh, just not a very good time. All right. Neil. Martin. Where's Linda? Mom, have you seen Linda? Ah! Performing a home circumcision. <laughs> Amazing what you can do with an old potato peeler. Ah! Isn't he lovely? Mm. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh. Well done. <laughs> Hello, grandson. I'm your granddad. And this is your great granda. <laughs> he looks just like me. No, he doesn't. What's up with you? Nothing. Um, <clears throat> something in my eye. 
Do you want to hold him? No. Go on. I'll, I'll come on. Oh, come on, you soft lump. Oh. Oh. Now, hold his head. There. You've got him. Oh, wow. Who would have thought Martin could produce something so perfect? <laughs> so small. I'll get the camera. Have you decided on name? Yes, Robert. Oh, we thought George. George? Mm. After Martin's granddad. Well, I still like Robert. I think Clive's a nice name. George Martin Dimbleby Pond. Dimbleby? Mm. <laughs> it's Martin's idea. Oh, come to your grandma. Oh. We are going to play together every afternoon, you and me. And we'll be going on our holidays. Mummy and Daddy and Grandma and Grandad. <laughs> Whitby. Actually, this year we were thinking of going somewhere hot. Oh, no. With my skin type, I need a bit of cloud cover. <laughs> Same skin as me, I tan easily enough. That's not your skin. <laughs> yes, Whitby it is. And soon it'll be your first Christmas. You'll all be coming to me, I take it. Oh, well, we were thinking... Of course you will, cos you want to spend your first Christmas with your grandma, won't you, Robert? George! <laughs> oh, we're going to have such fun as a family. Say cheese. <laughs> Martin, who is it? I don't know. Do you think it's that stalker? I don't know, but if it is him... I'm going to smack him. Be careful. I'm sorry, pal, but could you tell me the way back to Doncaster? <laughs> it's the wheel come full circle, isn't it? Mm. Our Linda having our grandchild on our bed. I know. What a hell of a wash day tomorrow. We conceived our Linda on this bed. Don't be vulgar, Ted. <laughs> Do you remember that night, Ma? 15th of February, 1971. The day we went decimal. <laughs> you only had one thing on your mind that night. I know. Mm. That full bottle of threatening bits I knew I had to spend quick. <laughs> Is that the only thing you remember that no. night? No. I remember Billy Bremner missed a last-minute penalty against Wolves. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to need a new mattress. No, we won't. I've turned it over. I know. That wonky spring's on my side now. Oh, it cost a fortune, this mattress. The man from Fowler's said it was a breakthrough in independent posture springing. Oh, well, tell that to my left buttock. <laughs> it's been quite a day, hasn't it? Helping one member of the family into the world and chucking another out. <laughs> hey, I must do that tomorrow. Where is Mum? On the fish tank. Ah!